I don't. I don't have like a cre- clever opening this time. I don't have like a cold open. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I guess there's no rule saying we have to have it. one. Yeah, I didn't think about it either. <laughs> there's no rule saying we have to have one every week. We could just go into it. This could be the. This is the first. Probably won't be the only. We'll just go right into it. So. uh Welcome to Crowbar Colonel Panic, the podcast at the intersection of Linux and gaming. This is episode four. Woo! Live streaming on YouTube at Undercast Collective. And uh, new episodes will be posted at the Crowbar Colonel Panic YouTube channel. Um, you can send us an email, bo at mintcast.org, as well as crowbar kernel panic at pm.me. So you set us up a Proton Mail. What was, what was that yep. like? I've never sent a pretty, Proton Mail. Oh, it's awesome! I actually, I actually got the two-year plan of Proton Mail and Proton VPN. Wow! And it was like it was like fifty percent off. So I was like, you know, I'm doing this because like I want to get rid of Google. I just, I just don't like. I hate it. I hate Google. <laughs> That's awesome. I've never used like I know I'm aware of the Proton services, but I've never actually used it. Do they have like a? Do they have like a equivalent to Google Notes? Like, could we use it for show notes also? They have a beta of their proton drive right now and i don't know what it all Ooh. entails because i haven't really um looked into it like i, I got it with my my uh subscription because i got mm-hmm. the two years and um i don't know exactly what it entails if it's if it has anything to do like with um docs or anything like that okay well maybe look into that we'll check that out i know that we had talked about uh possibly doing show notes on like github or yeah. GitLab, some kind of Git thing, which I yeah. love the idea of because I can have it open at work and it just looks like I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing when you said that. I was like, "Oh yeah, that's that's definitely that's definitely yeah. got to be where we go." <laughs> right now, I, I right now I have a Google Doc open, and uh, yeah, it's pretty obvious what I'm doing. But uh, it was in uh, we had it marked down on GitHub. I think I could yeah. kind of I could kind of hide that a little bit. Exactly. Um, Last week, I told you guys to leave us a voicemail, and I gave a number. Well, I got two messages saying that the voice, you call the number, and it would just ring infinitely. So apparently, the voicemail doesn't work. Don't do that. Oh, man. (laughs) (laughs) Just don't even even try that. Ignore that from last week. We'll never mention it again. Apparently, (laughs) it's not a a real thing. Um, uh, This episode, we plan to discuss some Magic Legends, Valheim, um, we got a comment uh, with an issue with ESO. Um, so, uh, and then you've got a lot of notes down here, and I see that you've got a GPU over your shoulder, and so <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that's a topic of discussion. So we'll see where this goes. Uh, How has your week been, man? How you doing? Ah, uh, been doing good. Just uh, getting on with my uh, regular day job. Yay! Not really, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just not a lot of not a lot of time to do a lot of stuff right now. We're, we're uh, just getting into the uh, new season for uh, landscaping, so it's it's a little hectic right now. Until until about middle of middle of June, it's a little hectic. <laughs> so, yeah, I've had a I've kind of had like a career change at work where I, I'm at this, I'm at the same place, but I'm in a new position, and I'm still also kind of in my old position. And so I'm doing this weird transition thing where like, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. And, uh, yeah, so it's been, it's been crazy. I feel like I haven't done like hardly any gaming this week. Um, I, I actually, I tried to play. It's funny. My, sometimes my kid wants to watch me play something. He'll, he'll say he wants me to play what wants me to watch me play a video game. And I'll open, you know, I'll open a game and it's not what he wants to see. Like, like I tried to open ESO <laughs> and he's like, no, not this game, not this game, daddy. <laughs> and what he means is he wants me to play World of Warcraft. That's the game. He doesn't understand. That is the de facto game for children. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's something about the cartoonish like art style of it. Uh, I tried, I thought, I thought, okay, well, Albion has that sort of cell shaded right. kind of look. And I thought, oh, he'll like that. 
he was bored to death. I was like, oh, check. It's a, I was like, <laughs> see, here's my carrots. was not doing it for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, look, here's my farm. Here's my carrots. I got like, you know, this lady over here, she wants an omelet. I can't make it for her. Like, you know, she, he was not interested in that whatsoever. Um, so I installed, uh, I thought, well, maybe I can play WoW Classic because I'm not really interested in WoW right now. And I thought, well, maybe I could play WoW Classic, and he'll be as interested in that. But he wants the pandas, man. He like only wants me to play <laughs> <laughs> the Pandaren. The so, <laughs> <laughs> so I haven't installed. I haven't actually played anything, but I I installed it uh, the other night just because I know he's going to come ask me again. <laughs> so I work for him now. I play the games he <laughs> asked me to play. He's the new show director for the podcast because. <laughs> <laughs> Switching oh. to the the Wow podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, really? That is our Pan- new. That is our new thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Pandaren only podcast. <laughs> Pandaren only. Um, but we've both been trying to get in some Valheim. Um, <laughs> trying in the emphasis. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I haven't been doing that well at it. I got to be completely honest. Um, not doing that well. There's <laughs> there's uh, a friend of ours that hangs out in our um, Discord channel, the Mintcast. Uh, Linux gaming channel and um, uh, in it RD, which fantastic name, by the way, that's like the best. <laughs> I want to steal that for a character name. That's such a good name. Um, he's been like totally like blowing us out of the water. Oh yeah. Um, like I, I, I can't, can't even keep, keep up with him. No, no I can't way. keep up with whatsoever. And you know, that's kind of what I want to talk about tonight is so Valheim is if I were to sum it up in like a sentence just to say how well I think the game is, it's a very good game. Like it's a, it is a very good game. I see why people love it so much. I, I think it's innovative in the genre that it's in. And I think it's really, I think it's really well done. I can also see where it's going to grow. Like I can see that the game is going to continue to develop and become better, but I just don't know that this, I don't know that I'm like the fan for this genre. Like I don't, I just don't know. I don't know if it clicked with me right. You know, um, I mean, how do you feel about it? I, I really like it. I mean, I, I just, I come from Minecraft and all this kind of stuff. Like just like right. it, except for this one's a little. You know, it's got a little extra things to it. So I'm kind of used to this kind of stuff, it being the builder and all this stuff. But then it's got all the aspects of going to the different areas and actually having to beat the bosses to go to those areas, you know, I mean, you don't have to beat the boss. You can go there, but you'll die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. will not be ready. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's really, to me, it's relaxing until you, you know, really go into areas where you're not supposed to, then it's not exactly relaxing. It's kind of stressful. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Uh, and well, you know, well, you say that, so you're, you're right, but, um, uh, I found, I found the like snowy area on the on our server that we're on. Um, I don't know if you guys have went out there yet. I'm sure NRD has already conquered it. When I go out there, there's like five huts already built. <laughs> um, but I just like stumbled into it, like just running it at random. I was trying to go through the dark forest area and uh, looking for nothing. I've the way I've been playing the game, I'm basically just running around like aimlessly, and and I happen to stumble across it. And I just said, I don't think I have any business being here, and I'm going to leave. And I turned around and went back to my house. Um, the thing I like about the game is the exploration, like how like you know I don't know what's around every corner, and because everything is sort of procedurally generated, there's no there's no way to find out like exactly how your world is going to be. Right. Um, there's obviously like milestones, and there's you know a progression to the game that is the same everywhere. Um, but there's there is that like randomness to it because it's uh, generated, and and I and I and I like that aspect of it. I also feel like because the game is so new, and you know it's the, the developers, and it, it's kind of uh, it's kind of esoteric in a way. Like it's kind of like there's not a lot of details on the game really. I mean, right. Especially when it first came out, there was like none. Um, so it's not like you know. It feels like the early days of Warcraft, where like you know there wasn't a way to just go look up. You know the best thing to do. There was you, you had right. to explore, and I like that about it. I've even been in situations where like the first time I ran into the giant troll thing in the dark forest, where it was like I saw it and I was excited. Like it just 
like I was like fighting three of the little guys with the glowy eyes. And <laughs> while I was fighting them, this giant troll just comes out of nowhere. And yep. I was excited to see it, even though I knew it was about to squish me. Like I knew that, <laughs> I knew that this was the end for me. Um, I still was excited to see it just because I hadn't seen it yet. And it was just out of nowhere. And I didn't even know. Like I, I haven't been looking things up about the game other than just playing it. So I didn't even know that it yeah. was possible to I knew it was possible. I knew I had heard enough about the game to know that sort of thing just could randomly happen. But yeah, it's it's kind of neat that even in even in scenarios where something is just going to come out and obliterate you, it's still kind of exciting to see it happen. Um, but yeah, my thing is just like whenever we're all on together, it doesn't feel like we're really benefiting all that much from us all being online, right? But then whenever we're not on together, I don't know what to do. Like I don't know what to do when I'm on by myself. <laughs> Well, it's it's nice to get a bunch of your friends together and just kind of just walk around and do whatever, you know, like you do this, you do that, you do this, you know, you gather this, you gather that, you know, and then it's kind of like you can kind of do a teamwork kind of scenario instead of just, you know, having to do everything and watch your back and all this other crap, you know, like, like with three of us on, two of us could watch our backs when the other guy goes and gets resources and stuff, you know. Yeah. I think that's that's definitely a part of the game that uh, we haven't really got to experience because we haven't got to play it a lot like that. But I, also, I mean, I could play it alone, truthfully. Yeah, yeah. I just when I play it alone, I just feel like I, I, all right. I think it comes from years of you know getting caught up in the theme park MMO grind, where mm. I feel like if I'm not spending my time grinding something, then I'm wasting time. I can't right. just like log into a game and just enjoy the game. <laughs> right, right. You need an objective of some sort. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Need I a, need to need know a, what. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm working towards. Yeah. Right. And, um, and trust me, there's plenty of grind. There's plenty of things to work for, work towards in this game. I just don't know. I don't know what it is I should be doing yet. You know. Um, and I think in some ways, I'm looking at the game wrong because I'm kind of thinking about it like it's an MMO that we get to host the server. Like. Right. It's because that's one cool thing, and and people listening to this podcast would appreciate is that, like this is a Linux native install. You don't need to do any sort of uh, Proton or anything like that. Right. Um, and not only that, but it is also self-hosted. You can host a server on your PC. You can join someone else's. You can do it. We're actually hosting on DigitalOcean. Um, so yeah, it's 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 really cool in all those ways. Um, just the techie aspect of me, the techie side of me, likes it. But yeah, I'm kind of treating it like this is like a little mini MMO that I'm hosting. <laughs> and it only has it's like nine. three or four members. Yeah. <laughs> um, but maybe that's the wrong way to look at it because whenever I listen to podcasts talk about Valheim, they really hype up the feature that you get to leave your server with your character and go to another server and bring all right. your stuff there. Yeah, that is that is really cool. That's something that I haven't actually seen in a game before that I can remember like when you log out you're usually done like i can go into our server do whatever i want gather materials any materials i need go back to mine on my personal computer and just dump it all go back grab some more you know like you know i could boost my brand new account that i just created on my computer Mm -hmm. with the one that we did all the work on on the server so that's that's really cool I kind of, I kind of think the fact that we're not taking advantage of that may be part of the element of the game that we're missing, right? And uh, I don't know. Maybe I should look into that. Maybe I should look into that more. I think I we know. just need to get more quality time with the game. I, I, I think we just haven't had enough time because you, with your new position and me now working, it's like it really does get get tough to um no it, it, to play. <laughs> No, that's definitely true. I definitely have had less time lately. I I agree with you there. I was sick. I was I uh, I got my COVID vaccine and it made me sick. You know all this. I'm just explaining it for the podcast. But like, made me sick. And then pollen came out, and now I'm sick from that. So like, it's been like, <laughs> I feel like I've been sick for two weeks. Um, but um, but the truth is, I've sat at my computer every night. I mean, I've I've played other games. I, I am kind of in a state right now where I'm not satisfied by anything I'm playing. Um, I know there's plenty of other people that have. There's probably a ton of people that has been in that situation, but like, you know, I install a game, I, I a game, 
I'm not buying all these games, but games I've played in the past, and then I log in. And I right. Go, uh, yeah, I know. I have like three games installed, and the rest of them are just yeah. sitting there waiting to get installed. <laughs> so, um, so I am in a rut right now. I feel like gaming wise. So I could, I definitely could have logged in to Valheim this week, 100. percent I'm sure I could have. I could have made the time if I was excited about it, but I just can't. I know that when I log in, I'm not going to know what to do, and right, and I'm just going to log back out. And uh, right. I don't want to feel that way. I want to like the game, man. <laughs> I want to like it. I can tell it's a good game. <laughs> well, it's also it's also not finished yet. You know, it's it's yeah. not like like seriously. Since we've started playing, there's been how many updates? Like five or six, maybe. Yeah, it's I know. Been- I've, I've had to reboot the uh, the server at least three times now because of yeah. So updates. three, yeah. So three updates, and and every one of them brings crazy features. Like the one, like when we first started, when you built your your shelter, no monsters would attack it or anything like that. Then the update came, and all of a, all of a sudden, I'm just sitting there, and all these monsters start running out of the woods, and it's like you're under attack, and I'm like, wow, that's weird. And then I looked at, at the the notes for the update, and that was one of the features, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I know that for a while there, like every time I would I would log in like you guys wouldn't be on and that giant troll would just be like hanging out around our houses <laughs> it's like oh i can't even leave the house oh another <laughs> weird thing happened the other day um i was not far from where our like safe zone is and right. i was cutting down trees it's when i built my house okay and i was cutting down trees to build the house and then just out of nowhere one of those skeleton dudes from the dark forest just like popped oh, up. oh man yeah and those the- are those are tough and it was the plains area. Like I didn't even know they would spawn there. They shouldn't, but eh, I don't know. Maybe they come out of the woods. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty close to the dark forest. Like yeah, we are to be still it's, in the it's, plains. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I don't know. There's definitely stuff there that I like. I think I. I think it may be just one of those things where I need to play enough that I get over the hurdle. You right. Know? Right. Um. You You ever listen to a band and? The first time you hear them, you're like, "Ooh, I don't know if I could do this," you know. And then, yeah. but you keep at it until it gets to the point where you're like, "Okay, I get I it. I kind of get it now." Yeah, I've crossed the <laughs> yeah. challenge. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's where I am with Valheim. I'm trying to get over the hump. Um, but uh, but yeah. So, um, anyway, I, I'm I'm rooting for it. I want to like it. Me too. Um, while we're still in the like first half of the show um i kind of want to mention this uh comment that we got on on the elder scrolls episode um from magic doll the magic doll on youtube um this was on the video so i cut out the portion where we were talking about like installing and playing um elder scrolls on linux i cut it out like as its own video and so he commented on that video and he says uh my issues currently with doing a fresh install of it is and then he puts in quotes the error message he gets installation path is not writable and i have no clue how to fix it Hmm. um so originally i thought this may be related to the same issue that i was talking about on the show where um i couldn't I, i couldn't get it to install because it was saying that there wasn't enough space where i was trying to install it um right I, I didn't respond with that because I wanted to wait until we could talk about it on the on the episode. But in doing research just before just before I came on, I actually found uh, what I'm pretty sure is the solution to his problem. Um, yeah, it's actually the exact error message. So on Proton DB, uh, and this was just posted. Uh, where's the date on these things? How do you say four days ago? So this was just posted four days ago. That comment is a little older than four days old. Um, I looked at the screenshot I took and it says 23 hours ago, but (laughs) that's a screenshot from like five, five or six days ago. So it's more than 23 (laughs) hours. Um, so the, uh, uh, this commenter, uh, czar B, he says, um, he gave the game a thumbs up rating and he says that the launcher error, the selected installation path is not writable, which sounds like the same, the same error he's getting. Please update the permissions to the selected path. Because that was my first thought. Oh, was, yeah. What yep. if his permissions is not correct, right? Yep. But he says um, the solution is to remount drive Z um, by symbolic link. 
and he gives some uh, he gives some commands on how to do that. So you CD and uh, to the path of the uh, the DOS devices folder for your Steam apps, um, and I'll have all I'll have a link to this in the show notes. And if you're watching the video, I have it on the video right now. Um, and then you run a RMZ, so you're removing that Z directory within that uh, DOS devices directory, and then create a link. Um, a symbolic link from common to Z, and he gives all these commands hmm. here. Um, I want that's to say, so strange. Yeah, it is weird. There, there's someone else that I was reading that said that you have to, you have to. Oh, I think it's this guy. I think it's Alec, and this is from three days ago. For those who are, for those who have right path issues. Note that this game on Linux requires you to install it on your main drive. This means if you have a second drive where you put your games, it will not work. Go hmm. to that's, Steam. That's yeah, weird it's, because it's weird. I, I, I install it on another drive. Really? And I have no problem. Not a single problem. And you installed it since that uh, most recent... So yeah, you, oh yeah. Because we, we played it that night that the most recent update right. had just come out. Yep. I, I I actually have installed it on two computers on a separate drive huh. and had no problem. I wonder what the I wonder what the difference is. Cuz I had a similar problem and I'm installing it directly to my main drive. Now he's installing it through Steam, right? He didn't go into those details in his description, but I'm guessing I'm guessing that is the case. Cuz see Steam, know. Steam all you got to do is you got to create a new steam um library on the other drive and then you're pretty much done and then you'll just install all the games to that new drive or the new library i should say yeah i've um, i've done that for other things in the past but it was way before this issue i mean yeah. i think i've even had eso st- installed on another drive before but it was before yeah. this this update i think i think we need more information to really get down to why this happened you know, like yeah. what distro, what version, you know, because if it's if it's an obscure distro, even it might might be a problem. Yeah. You know, uh, Magic Doll, I don't know if you're still I don't, I don't know if maybe you just stumbled across a Linux ESO video and you're not planning to watch any more Crowbar Kernel <laughs> Panic. Um, I don't know. But if you are, um, you know, post post us some details in another comment and uh, we'll see if we can help you. Um, and if anybody you know listening has advice for Magic Doll, uh, post that as well. Um, but uh, there was another. It was another one I thought was pretty interesting. Um, this guy says that he thinks he figured out the uh, why the installer is choosing the first drive. Um, but anyway, he provides a screenshot of where you can actually change your the path to the second drive. Hmm, this is interesting. So this is a second drive within your Wine configuration. Oh, okay. So maybe if your quote-unquote Wine, you know, your quote-unquote C drive is on another drive logically, like physically, right. then right, maybe right. it still works. Maybe it's maybe it's the fact that it's trying to install to your second drive, quote-unquote, on Wine. Hmm. I've never had to do that, though. Yeah, like I've I've never actually had to separate out the dr- the virtual drive in Wine to another drive. Yeah, I've never I've never needed to do that either. Hmm. That is so. that's weird. Well, I could see this maybe being a problem if he's trying to install it with let's say Lutris or something like that, and they have a script running. Yeah. But if if you're doing it through Steam, I I I just I would need more details to know why this is going, why this is happening. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be really interested if anybody can provide more details or if they've had the same problem to let us know. I mean, I definitely see other people getting that error. So there is some right. there is some amount of, you know, there's some situational, you know. Yeah, where there's that definitely something happen. going on. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah, so what's the deal? What's, what's the deal with this uh, graphics card that you've got perched like a parrot over your shoulder? Actually, <laughs> there really isn't any story to it. It's the one okay. I have in my it's the one I have in my computer right now that I've been using. I just have it up there because I figured I might as well do that instead of seeing a wall. Oh, oh okay, okay. I thought I thought <laughs> I wish I had a story for it. <laughs> 
I waited three days in in the cold in the cold snow to get this graphics card outside of outside of every store. Finally found one. I begged man, the man. I've been teasing that the whole show. <laughs> I was like, "Oh crap! This is gonna this is gonna backfire." <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but did you you did get a new mini PC? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Um, well, I mean, <laughs> it's not impressive at all. It's all it is is a uh, Atom processor. It's a quad core. But my thinking is, I'm going to use it as a uh, file file server like attached to external drives. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with gaming. So I'm ass- going to I'm assuming that this is going to work. If it doesn't work, it's going to be my new Steam uh box, Steam Link box oh, for my yeah. TV. That's probably because overkill I figure for that. that'll be plenty. I can do it with my Raspberry Pi um the uh what's it? The 3B or whatever. Yeah. So this is way more powerful than that. So I might as well give it a shot. <laughs> yeah, no, that's but, yeah, a good that's, idea. That's just uh, that's just my thinking with it. I'm hoping it's going to work as my file server because right now I'm kind of like annoyed that what I have is not working. And it, even if it does, I can use my laptop that I'm using right now. It's it's a crazy huge HP workstation, and um, that's like my gaming laptop. But it's like mm. super old. It's like from 2015, and it has the the um, uh, what do I call it? The uh, Radeon 7750 mobile in it. Which is yeah. like it's garbage, but yeah. <laughs> but it's my best. It's the best uh, laptop for gaming I have. So it, it worst comes to worst, I can use that as my my uh, Steam Link too, because it's got a D, uh, Display Port. I've never had good luck with gaming laptops. Ugh. I feel like you just yeah. Like you just every laptop you buy for like every laptop you buy for like four or five years, but um, yeah, gaming laptops are just too expensive, man. It's crazy. They are there you know what i actually i bought my wife one yeah. and it, it was it's an asus tough now the build quality is crap oh really but as long as you as long as you're gentle with it and you don't throw it around in your bag and do all this crap it's yeah. it's great for the price i got it i think i paid like 650 for it and it's got oh let's see here it's got the um ryzen 7 the second generation but it's the 3000 series for the laptops yeah and it's got a nvidia 1650 yeah 1650 mobile in it and i got it for like 600 bucks and i was like that seems really good uh, yeah and she it, it plays it plays eso it plays skyrim that's pretty much what my wife plays for the most part with no problem at least at least 30 frames a second at the very least so that's sounds- that, that yeah that i was happy with I think they're getting cheaper too. I think maybe you can get one now for a lot cheaper than what I'm yeah. thinking of. Yeah, you can get one for a decent price if you're willing to compromise on some things. You know, if you want everything, you're not going to get it for cheap. That's the mm. thing. I've tried. Trust me, I've tried hard because <laughs> I really want a gaming laptop just so I can like carry it around. You know. Yeah, I I have I have a laptop that has like dedicated graphics one gig i think but it's not a gaming laptop it's like right. intel dedicated graphics oh, um, okay it's the it's one of the uh, system 76 ones and i ordered it specifically to edit video on but i've never really used it for that it mostly just watches netflix um mainly because i just can't get used to using that that screen you know um Right, for editing video. I know that's uh i'm an old man i don't know that's not, <laughs> i know i know it's not a problem for everybody um, yeah. So, do you want to hear about Magic Legends? Do you want to hear yes. what the the lowdown yes, I'm, is? So, I'm, I'm very curious on <laughs> what the heck is going on with this. Um. So, uh, I I really I really rooted for this game because I do love Magic the Gathering. I love you know I love Wizards of the Coast in general. Like, um, I you know I love Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering. There's been some great Dungeons and Dragons games that have come out. The Magic uh, Magic the Gathering Arena is really good. I think it's a I think it's one of the best implementations of a card game on PC that I've I've ever played. Yeah, I've heard that. I've never actually played it, but I've heard that is really really it's, good for for a PC game. It's so natural that like I can't play real Magic now. Like. <laughs> 
Like it's it just it it handles so much of the upkeep for you that I actually before COVID the last Friday Night Magic I went to, I because I got back into the game playing Magic Arena, but I used to be a Friday Night Magic guy. I used to go. Uh, there's a there's a store called Corner Magic that's like a couple exits away from me. I used to go there for the big pre releases and stuff, and I'd go to Friday Night Magic every once in a while. And so I got back into the game because of Arena, and I hadn't played in a, in a few years. And so I thought, I'm gonna go up the Friday Night Magic. I'm about to whoop some <laughs> some noobs because because I was doing really good on Arena. <laughs> but then I sat down with those cards, man, and I'm telling you, like, it was like a different game because I, I <laughs> it's just so oh, much man. you don't even realize that the system's handling for you, like, um, right. like remembering to do things on your upkeep or. Like, you know, just remembering to tap things a certain way and just right, right. Just a lot of stuff that you get spoiled with in Arena. But anyway, um, fantastic implementation. Um, and so I, I had high hopes for, for Magic Legends. And they, they recently did their, they're calling it a beta release. Um, but the <laughs> argument, <laughs> I, it doesn't. I, all right. First off, it don't feel like a beta <laughs> because it feels very janky and unpolished. <laughs> that being said, I'm playing it on Linux and they don't even know that Linux players exist, right? So Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> the reviews for Windows has been really janky and unplayable. You can only imagine how bad it is trying to run yeah. that through emulation on uh, so so <laughs> my perspective on that, maybe I'm not the person to listen to. Go check out another YouTube channel that's playing it on Windows, but <laughs> from what I've heard it's janky for them too. Um but I had high hopes for it because um, I I like ARPGs. I like Magic the Gathering. It seemed like it was all the right stuff. It's um it's actually put out by Cryptic Studios, the same people that um picked up uh, Star Trek Online, and um Star Trek Online is not not a great game, <laughs> but if you're a fan of Star Trek, then it's it's a lot of fun. It's it's kind of like that. Um, it's not a, it's not an awful game. It's d- by any means. But it's not a great game. It's like game. one of those things you, you compromise because it's a Star Trek thing and you and you actually yeah. get to experience Star Trek. So if you're a Trekkie, you really you really can get into it. But if you're not, it's like what what is this? And and, <laughs> and another and another thing another reason why that's important to this situation is like I'm the same for magic. Like I would forgive a lot just because I'm a fan of magic, you know? Right. Um so it's a similar it's a similar situation, but um, so I installed it using this application. I'm going to show it on the stream. Um, it's called Heroic, which is like uh, the Epic Game Store, but for Linux. And Don't mention Epic Game Store. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never, I've never had a game where I've needed it, so I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know other Epic Game Store games. Like I don't even know it's, anything it's about horrible. them. It's horrible. Just ugh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really wouldn't know. I, I don't even know. Um, but, uh, heroic is a tool I, I'd never heard of. I actually think it may, does it only do, or can you add other games to it? I don't know if you can like add, cause it's actually a nice launcher. Um, I also saw that the, uh, you know, you and I had talked about kingdom hearts was, was coming to, uh, um, they, they have it available on here too. Although I, I'm not, they're too expensive for me to purchase just to try out. Um, but, um, especially a game I've already played. Um, but uh, let me see if I can see who makes this. Um, I have a link to it here. Heroic Games Launcher. I have a link to their GitHub in the uh, in the show notes. Um, but this is like this is made by you know this is made by some developers. So go check it out. And um, and so I got it. I got it set up on here. I couldn't find I couldn't find a Lutris build for it. I don't know if one's come out now since I checked. But at the time, I couldn't find a Lutris build. Um, so I did this heroic installer and then currently I'm just using my wine staging. It was just the default wine staging that was installed at the time. I haven't changed it. It's uh, 6.4 and, um, I have uh DXVK on prefix. Oh, that's just for auto install update. Um, so anyway, that's my settings. If you want to try to install it and, and copy my settings, but I, I don't, I don't know if I have terrible settings or if the game just doesn't work that well. <laughs> But it's it's really bad. Like whenever you load the game, like all of the cutscenes, like if you want to play Magic Legends on Linux, just forget the cutscene. You're just never gonna get the cutscenes. All right, just forget them. They don't exist. 
Um, and so, and so instead, it'll just it'll try its best, and then it'll realize it can't do it, and it'll just give up, and then it'll just cut you right to where the where the level loads. Oh man! <clears throat> and then whenever you're playing the game, it feels pretty fluid. Honestly, like it feels pretty fluid moving the character around. You know, using the attack animations for the most part, they're pretty good. I don't have an FPS running, so I don't know how well I'm doing. I don't think I want to know. I was um, just about to say, don't do it. Yeah, it'll just depress me. <laughs> um, but whenever other players show up, is whenever things get hectic. Uh, whenever you try to play with other players in your group, it is just like constant, just like stutter. That's when you know it's a software problem because they they don't have the the what do you want to call it they don't have it optimized it's not enough optimized to, yeah right to take advantage of everything it's probably like running on one core <laughs> it's like <laughs> oh yeah you're probably right especially especially for me on linux it's probably only utilizing one of my cores that would be interesting to watch like an h top or bash top or something while i'm while i'm doing it yeah. um so uh the gameplay itself is is not bad um Sorry, my my pollen is getting me. <laughs> um, the uh, the gameplay itself, uh, there's aspects of it that I really enjoy. Um, there's there's parts of the game that I actually think are really good, and I hope that the game fixes the issues that it has. I hope they fix the optimization. Um, there's lots of other criticisms that I'll talk about, but I hope they fix all those things because there are aspects of it that I think are really good, like the card game aspect. So. Um, just to kind of give you like how how does this fit into a world w- that's based on a card game? Well, um, the way it works is it's a like Diablo style isometric action RPG, um, but whenever you cast spells, that's based on the cards that you've drawn from your deck. So the the cards look just like magic cards. They have like the same cost. I'm sure some of them are actually real cards. I, I haven't I honestly haven't played enough to actually to actually know, but um, there's like a, a mana cost, just like in magic. There's a description of what it does. And, um, you know, they've chosen abilities that make sense for an RPG. Um, and they come up randomly in your action bar. So, and when you use one, it'll, that card will go back into the deck and then you'll draw another card. And so if you're doing a build and you want to have more of a certain thing than some, than some, some other, you would just build your deck that way so that you're more likely to draw what you need for your build. That aspect of it, I love because I love deck building. I love card games. I mean, I, I, I am such a sucker. This, the camera is getting this, all these boxes behind me. Actually, that box right there, <laughs> that's actually a magic secret layers. That That's like a special thing. I think this box is magic cards, but all the things on this shelf are card games and RPG games that like I became obsessed with, purchased, and then more than likely never played. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I I do I I love card games. I love these things. And when I was a kid, me and um me and a cousin of mine would just play them all the time. We would play card games, and um so the deck building aspect of it I think is really cool. And I would love to see that in an MMO or a ARPG. Um, I think that's a really cool, really cool concept. The thing that I don't like about it and that maybe they can kind of work on is when I'm playing an MMO and, you know, we talked about our mouses on the last episode. I'm using a mouse, pressing buttons with my thumb. I'm trying my best not to lower my eyes to the bottom of the screen so I can see what's there. But at the same time, if you don't know what cards are going to be where, you have to. You have to look down at the at the bottom of the screen. So I don't know how they I don't know how they could combat that. Maybe that's just a trade off of having a game that's based on cards. Um, but one thing I could think of is what if it's like, sure I don't know what card I'm going to draw, but I could say well anytime it is this type of card, it would be on this button. I don't know. It's really hard. It's 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 really hard like because map it map it to the button that it should be like one type of card is one button. Yeah, special, certain but, it, button, but like if you think it. about it, but as I'm saying this, I'm seeing the flaw in it. Like, if you think about <laughs> it, though, if, like, let's say I wanted uh, the two on my mouse to always be a um, a directional, like one where you have to actually aim it and then drop it. Um, right. Because they have a lot of abilities like that. Well, what if I draw four abilities like that? 
you know? Mm. Like, they've got to land, they've got to go somewhere on my bar. Right, you can't just have them all in one. Well, somehow you can right. scroll through it, like you select it and then use your mouse wheel to scroll through it, but then you got to look anyway. Yeah, then you got to look. That's probably harder than just the way it is now, so yeah. Maybe, maybe like a sound. Maybe they can make them different sounds. Like for the different, but that'd be a lot to to remember. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I listen to like podcasts and music and stuff when I'm playing games. Usually. Yeah, that'd be hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. This is this is like a problem, but and I don't know the answer. But at the same time, I like the premise enough that maybe that's just something we have to deal with. You know, that's definitely not the biggest flaw of the game. Trust me. Um, now, is this a free to play game? I didn't I ask. It's free to play with monetization. Which it's and it's very okay. similar to the monetization within MTGA. Uh, Magic Arena. You basically have like as you play the game, you unlock things. Um, okay. But if you pay a premium, then you get like a special tier of unlocks. So you'll uh, you'll okay. still get the normal unlocks plus you'll get these others. Um, but they gotcha. also sell loot boxes, which you know we talked about before how like kind of scummy loot boxes are. Um, but yeah. <laughs> but the funny thing is, is I used in my example that they're kind of similar to booster packs in Magic, and so right. it almost it almost fits the theme, you know. Um, but right, I can actually kind of understand it in the card game. To tell you the truth, like you said, with the booster packs and whatnot, that makes sense to me. Yeah, I just think that it has to be a similar sort of trade off. Like, I know that if I buy a certain number of boosters, I'm not guaranteed anything. But I just know by the by the factor of you know probability that right. you know I'm, I'm allotted a certain amount of value based on buying a hundred booster packs versus a lot of these loot crate style things like you is that that probability is just so astronomical and i don't know that it's that way with magic legends honestly i haven't got far enough in the game just because of my um my compatibility issues i haven't gotten far enough to even try that aspect but right. the the sort of the general consensus of what i've seen online is that it's not it's not good um <laughs> <laughs> it's just bad <laughs> yeah um now I just wonder how I wonder how I wonder if it's a community thing. I wonder if the community of the card game group that you would see in MTGA is more susceptible to that type of monetization versus the community of an MMO ARPG. I wonder if it's just a conflict there of just that they kind of right. expected maybe you know this community would accept it the same way and they didn't. Um, I know that one. Uh, one piece of drama that came out of this was they were offering a certain class that you could only be if you found it. I think you had to find it in loot boxes. Um, mm. There was some sort of paywall that you had to go through to get it. And then people complained about it. And then they said, oh, well, you can also get it through signing up for premium. And so they, they then signed up for premium. So the people that spent like hundreds of dollars on loot boxes were like oh man you know but wait like, I, what the heck i want a refund on my 400 dollars yeah. of loot boxes then um so yeah they're running into issues right now both in both in optimization um but also in their uh in their model and yeah. i don't think the criticisms are, are unwarranted but i think there's something good here like i i hope that they are able to work this out and it turns into a good game um, one piece of criticism that uh, you brought up to me that I think is valid is that uh, you had heard that it sounded like a, a mobile game. Um, right. Am I misreading? Am I, I'm not misquoting no. you, right? You said that I thought <laughs> something somebody else. Not in this episode, but I did mention okay. I did mention that it does kind of sound like a mobile game. So uh, it it feels like one. Like whenever you're playing it, there's some aspect of it that it does, and I can't put my finger on what it is. You're not like that's not off I'll base at all. I'll have to play it because. I've played several mobile games, and I, I, I can never get into them. I always try. Like, I even tried um, Elder Scrolls Legends, I think. Is that what it's called? Uh, uh, Elder Scrolls I'm, Legends. That sounds familiar to me. Is that, is that a card game? I'm not 100% sure. Well, it, no, it's it's actually a 3D game on your phone. It's like, I think it's for um, Android and iOS. But it's free to play. And, um, like, I tried to get into it so much, but... I just, I just couldn't. It was just the. I don't know what it was about it. If it was just the paywalls that they put up, or it, it, what it was, but I just could not get into that game. It just wasn't happening for me. So I don't know. I, I'll have to try it and see. I think the aspect of it that probably people are talking about whenever they say that, and 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 they're. I think they're right. But this is. There's so many different currencies, 
and so many different things that you're like, okay, not only do I have to make a deck of cards, but I've got to level up the cards. And, uh, you know, okay. it's it, whenever you play like a mobile game, a lot of times it's like, well, I got to, you know, I've I've got these heroes, and I got to level up their gear, and then I got to level up. Oh their, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see think what there's you're that, saying. and I think that's yeah. kind of a cryptic thing too, because STO has an element of that too, where there's just like so many different currencies and so many different things, and it's kind of manufactured depth. It's to make you feel right. like the game is deeper than it is when it's really not. <laughs> <laughs> like if they if they wanted this game, all right. Another weird thing. All right, so you have to level up cards. Right. <laughs> you have to build a deck of your spells. And right. on top of that, you still wear gear. You still have shoulder what? pieces and chest pieces. You still. So I you, have to play this game because this sounds so confusing to me. Like, <laughs> like I can't visualize this game because I know what Magic: The Gathering Arena is. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. I haven't played it, but I've seen people play it. And I haven't seen people play this, but I'm I'm picturing like like this card game morphed with like a 3D, you know, animation. That's, actually, that's thing. exactly what it is. And, like I, I don't know. I just I can't I can't like. I don't know. I have to play it. I have to My, play <laughs> All right. They're never going to listen to this. This is going to go into the void. And <laughs> uh, in it, RD and uh, the Magic Doll, uh, they're, they're going to hear this, right? But, uh, but nobody at Wizards of the Coast or Cryptic or anybody like that is ever going to. <laughs> but what I would do is I would try to lose that like manufactured complexity. You don't got to level up cards. Who cares? You, you don't have to worry about gear. Who cares? But keep the deck building aspect and release a ton of cards. Make their like so make it as many cards as there is in Magic the Gathering now. Like just make it like endless possibilities as far as the types of decks you can build. And then you're basically just playing magic. But that's so much work. <laughs> when what? they just have to level up stuff they just have to write some code and that's it oh, oh yeah yeah I see what you're saying <laughs> they actually have to make the cards or whatever you want to call it <laughs> that's true so there's probably more R&D involved in developing the cards than the systems in the game they can get like any... if they could just scan one of the cards in real life and put it into the game then that wouldn't be bad I don't think that's probably what they do they probably no, just no, design them it wouldn't translate I mean it wouldn't translate right. there's there's too many cards that just like you know like how the heck does that work in an in an RPG they'd have to right they have to choose cards that make sense for an RPG or, or um, you know develop their own cards just for the sake of the yep. RPG but I think it's always the money that's what <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a great game because then the complex, the complexity, the depth of it is based on the deck building, and right. cut out all this extra currency stuff. You know, just and cut there's all only that one out. thing you have to worry about: the deck building. You don't have to worry about the levels of your cards and all this other crap. Yeah, and and maybe the character, like, because I guess there's an aspect of like an MMO where like your character is like committed to one thing. Like, I chose the race I chose right. because I wanted to be a tank, you know, or something like that. Maybe they could have like aspects of different races so like some races are better at blue spells than others some are better at red spells than others um and as you level up your character you have some sort of tree where you you choose hey i'm better at casting uh necromancer style spells or i'm better at casting you know planes style spells so like they could do something like that where no no two characters are the same, but still make the game focused on the deck building aspect and try to loosen up on everything else. That's what I would do. That's right. what I would do. Hey, take my advice if you want. I Have a bad do. game if you want. It's your choice. <laughs> 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 the ball's in your court. <laughs> Cryptic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you want to get into yeah. some news? Or what do you think? Yeah, we can get into some news, I guess. Um, so scroll down. We had uh, Proton six point three dash one released. I have not looked at this yet. Is there any big? Uh, uh, oh, they do have a little bit of a list here. Let's look at this list a little bit. I like that the uh, anytime there's a new um, Proton release um, or even a Glorious Egg Roll release, they always talk about it on the uh, on the Linux Gaming subreddit. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. So let's. See. Oh, Divinity Original Sin two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a big one. That's definitely a big one for that. Yeah, I've got XCOM. That I've never I'm played sure, which, the XCOM games. Never which uh, yeah, I don't know what one that is. I haven't looked. It's uh oh, jeers. Uh, Chimera, Chimera Squad. I guess that would be XCOM Chimera Squad. Hm. 
Bioshock yeah. 2 Remastered, that's a pretty big one. Oh, yeah. Company of Heroes 2, that's another big one. Now, there's some pretty there's some pretty uh Yeah. pretty big games in this release that they fixed. Yeah, I think so. I think uh you know, it's it's so rare I'm just talking about how I can't get Magic Legends to play, but it's pretty uncommon these days to not find some way to be able to install a game on Linux. I mean, yeah, um, just Proton's opened the door to so many. I mean, I basically exclusively look on Steam these days just because it's so easy. Yeah, um, to just well, I want to support a platform that wants to support Linux. That's me. That's I just yeah. I can't stand like Epic. I would never use never because I would I don't want to support them because they don't want to support Linux. Yeah, but I appreciate these guys that are working on the Epic on the Heroic Game Store. The um, definitely got a yeah. That's shout good. out to I mean, family if, there. <laughs> right, if you can get Epic Games working without Epic Game Store, that's great. Yeah. Um, I put this in the note, and the uh, I put this in the. Um, hang on, I gotta mute it so it doesn't just start playing. Um, I put this in the news because I'm pretty excited about it. I don't know that it really qualifies as news, but yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Um, Path of Exile just released their past Path of Exile 2 trailer, um, and it looks amazing. Um, just, you know, this is the, this type of games, like right up my alley. I love these kind of games, but the, uh, my browser's going nuts. The, uh, <laughs> this, like the environments, the lighting, um even i've got it muted but even the the audio i mean dude it just it just it looks fantastic wow it does look pretty good and um it's uh it's got like a uh like an ancient egyptian vibe to it um, oh, okay yeah i kind of see what you're saying yeah yeah it is it looks so sick. i haven't even played through the first one like i, me I neither. literally like within like 15 minutes that's all i played of it or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too i haven't got wow this looks amazing yeah it looks awesome i i haven't got gotten... be hype I think that no dude I don't think it is. I think this is legit. So um this has me so excited that I want to play through the first Path of Exile now. I've started it so many times. I have a ton of characters. Uh, I do I've that. Never, I've I, never gotten all the way through it. I do that so often like I, a new game's about to come out and there's two other ones before it. I'm like I have to play the ones before it before I play this one. And then I never end up playing the new one because I'm stuck on the first one. <laughs> Yeah. I'm trying to play it. Well, they also <laughs> released uh, a new play setting for the original Path of Exile, which is one of the cool things about Path of Exile is it's like, um, and I guess I guess Diablo three, I guess Diablo also does this, but I haven't played in so long. I don't I don't know how similar or how different they are, but um, Path of Exile like they re they release like seasons the way Diablo does, but it's uh it's it's almost like an like an expansion because they add some element of the game, they add some huge change that affects how you play the whole game. Um, and the one that they're about to do is called Ultimatum. They announced it at the same event that they announced this uh, Path of Exile 2 trailer. And it's pretty neat. It's like a game show. Um, <laughs> so you'll be out in the world. There's a bunch of other features to it than what I'm about to describe, but this was the feature that, <laughs> that struck me as, as being pretty exciting. Um, so you'll be out in the world, and you'll see like this like deity that will offer you an ultimatum. And um, if you start the event, then you will just have to fight off like swarms of, of enemies. And each, each ultimatum has like a different like, you know, type of swarm. Some are more difficult than others. They have some have different styles of, of loot that it's dropped. There's all sorts of different ones. And there's actually an object in the game that represents it that you can, you can, actually pick up and carry i think you can actually even trade it with other players so maybe you've got like an ultimatum that's not good for you but you can trade it with another player um <laughs> and the reason why it's called ultimatum and this is the reason why it's like a game show is while you're in the middle of this battle trying to kill these things the screen will just freeze and then <laughs> a choice will come up and it'll basically tell you okay here's the loot that you've received up to this point click here to end the ultimatum and receive that loot or click here for the opportunity to get even better loot. Oh, but no. if you die, you lose it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's it's horrible. <laughs> oh man. It's, I'm like one of the guys I would just be like, Nope, I'm out. Yeah, Give me I'll that stuff and I'm out. leaving. Yeah, I know. I would, 
I always think that on these game shows where these people are like, like they just keep going to risk it all. I know. I feel like it's like <laughs> it's. I feel like that is almost the producers like saying like, no, you got to keep going. We yeah. don't have enough show. Come yeah. on, let's keep moving. <laughs> it could be. It really could be. I know how fake those. Uh, um, oh, hey, I didn't notice. Uh, Graham, sorry, I didn't see your comments in the chat. Uh, it says he's gotten Path of Exile one installed. Uh, oh, he's he's offering that up as maybe our next uh, maybe our next month session is uh, Path of Exile. Yeah, I'll definitely play. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> um, yeah, I always think about those game shows, and I just think like you walked in here with nothing. Even if you only leave with a couple thousand or whatever, right? That's still way you're, more. You're in the plus. <laughs> yeah, you're already in the plus. <laughs> just 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 stop oh, while you're man. ahead. Have a good vacation. You know what I mean? Like don't don't worry about yep. it. But then the yep. other side of that coin is you're thinking, <laughs> but I walked in here with nothing. So if I lose the couple grand, I'm leaving with exactly what I walked in <laughs> with. So why not risk it to get more? That's so- <laughs> true. That's true. Oh, man. So this is so this is the gist of Path of Exile Ultimate. <laughs> <laughs> it is a game show. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a hilarious premise. Um, and Path of Exile 2 looks <laughs> looks so astonishingly Yeah, it good. does look good. Um, let's see. We've got... Oh, this is probably the legitimately most important news. The Google versus Oracle. Um, yeah. I pulled up an excerpt. I was going to read a little bit of an excerpt from the article. Uh, uh, oh, this is from the Electronic Frontier Foundation, this article. And I need to move it to this screen so that I can read it. Come on. Come on. One thing I've noticed since I've switched to Arch is my, like, when I try to move a tab from one screen to the other, it, like, sticks to my mouse. If anybody's got a solution for that, let me know. Um, In a win for innovation, the U.S. Supreme Court has held that Google's use of certain Java application programming interfaces, a.k.a. APIs, is a lawful fair use. In doing so, the court reversed the previous ruling by the Federal Circuit and recognized that copyright only promotes innovation and creativity when it provides breathing room for those who are building on what has come before. Um, so this is, uh, please, please interject if I am explaining this wrong, but um, this was all due to the use of Java APIs in the development of Android. Yep. Um, and I guess Oracle was suing Google? Yes. Yeah, because Oracle uh, acquired um, Sun Microsystems, and they're the one that invented uh, Java. And, um, yeah, so then Google was using it for Android, the APIs, Mm -hmm. and they were like, hmm, we want that. We want a chunk of that change, (laughs) so we're going to sue you. And, um, yeah, yeah, that's basically how it started. And And it's been going on for, like, ten years. You know what this reminds me of? Well, it's probably not a fair... I'm I'm not a legal scholar. It's probably not a fair comparison. But I think about the time that um, iPhones were uh, being uh, jailbroken. And uh, Apple was... Yep. I think it was Apple tried to sue saying that the changes to the code... They were they were trying to sue for a similar reason. And Yeah. And, and, I know what you're saying. Yep. And they can't... I think it ended up being... In, in favor of the like sort of you know right right to repair sort of thing where it's like right yep the amount of changes you made is not enough to you know qualify as a uh, plagiarism right it wasn't illegal to jailbreak an iPhone yeah basically is what yeah. they ruled which yeah. which which is really a, which is really a different thing I guess but this this is more along the lines of like if you're reusing elements of code to build something new then they can't claim that because you reuse that, this is not something new and that well, you're it's actually not, stealing their thing. Right. It's not necessarily reusing, but if you're re-implementing it with new yeah. code, because as long as you're re-implementing it with new code, it's fine to to use. But if you take snippets from their, even if you like look at their code and you use too close of a resembling thing to their code, it could be considered copyright. Hmm. But the real the real win for this, I think, is that Wine is basically a reimplementation of um, uh, Windows APIs for Linux. So 
let's say um, Oracle won this, Microsoft could be like, oh, hey, Wine, you got to shut down now because we don't want you even remotely using our code to, you know, what do you want to say, uh, re-implement our, our yeah. APIs. And then Wine would be done. It, that would be it. Not, I'm not saying Windows or Microsoft would do that because they seem to be more in favor of being open at this time. I'm not going to say they're, they're you know, great, mm -hmm. but they definitely are more open to being open right now. So I don't think they would do it, but it, who knows what could happen in the future? That's, that's the key. And the key is we, we had a big win for that, for gaming on Linux, definitely. That was, this is a pivotal moment, I think. I think it needs more coverage than what it's even gotten. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, I think you're right. I think it's really cool. Um, this article also has uh, a little bit better of a description of the history of this. Let me see if I can find it. If I can't find it, I'll just cut this bit out. <laughs> <laughs> what bit? <laughs> what, what bit? What are you talking about? <laughs> I read it on my phone and it looks so different. Oh, I hate that. Okay, here it is. So to briefly summarize, over 10 years of litigation... Oracle claims a copyright on the Java APIs, essentially names and formats for calling computer functions, and claims that Google infringed that copyright by using re-implementing certain Java APIs in the Android OS when it created Android. Google wrote its own set of basic functions similar to Java, its own implementation, implement, <laughs> It's own implementing code, but in order to allow developers to write their own programs for Google, for Android, Google used certain specif specifications of the Java APIs, sometimes called the declaring code. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not good at the, the legal side of this, but it seems like a good president to set. And, yep. it, and they can't appeal it anymore because it went through the Supreme Court, so this oh, is it. Yeah. Oh, this is it. Wow. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah, it's really good. That's really good. I missed that aspect of it. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, go team. Win for wine. <laughs> <Yeah>. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. We're probably going to talk about Lutris and then get out of here. Um, oh, I did, I did some, uh, testing of distros. Oh too. yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's let's talk about. I actually forgot about it until I saw the the color coded <laughs> stuff I had, and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um. This, so yeah. So what was that? I was just gonna say this looks pretty extensive here. This looks pretty good. Eh, it was kind of like you know, just I was like, oh, I'm gonna try a bunch of distros and see how good this game works because this is what I was talking about. I have my games installed on a secondary hard drive in my laptop. Yeah. So I can just switch distros and just. Add the add the Steam library right to it and be done, and it's there. So that's what I was basically doing. Okay. I think I tested more than this, but I can't remember. <laughs> I should have wrote it down, but I didn't think about it. Really um, so uh, anyway, my uh, my laptop that I'm using is a huge 17 inch um, HP workstation. It's a uh, 8770W. It's freaking, it's huge. It's ridiculous. I got it for like 300 bucks on eBay, oh, I don't know, a long time ago. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, it has a 7750 Radeon mobile graphics card and a 3000 series i5. Um, okay. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's low end for now, but when I got it, it was pretty good. I could play most of my games. Um, so... The important Settings, thing is that you're using the same, you know, you're using the same test across right. all of them. That's yeah. that's exactly why I wanted to do it with this one. I didn't want to go from AMD to Nvidia or anything like that, or even Ryzen or whatever. It, it was going to be, yeah, that would be a mess. Right. So, um, what I did was I, I basically tested Valheim. That's the one game that I that I had installed, and I figured, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna try this out because this game. This game looks like it should run on anything. Yeah. But it it is so it, it I don't even know. I don't know what it is. I haven't really tested if it's the GPU or the CPU or what what exactly, but it is intense. Really? I mean, my, this this laptop was running hot. Oh wow. <laughs> it was bad. Um so I I didn't change any settings 
except for the resolution I put it full screen which is um, 1600 by 900 um, on that laptop so it's not even it's not even 1080p it's 900p um, I used OpenGL for the testing uh, just because Vulkan wouldn't work for all the distros I don't know why I, I installed Vulkan and everything um, via the package managers and it just it would not open in the Vulkan on some of them um, but the ones that it did work with Vulkan, it was three to five frames per second less than OpenGL. And that's been across the board for every single computer I've used. I could kind of see that, um, because the frames per second would be better. Um, but I'm not sure that the game would actually look better. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it didn't. I think it would be it, more yeah, fluid. Didn't look, yeah. 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 It definitely didn't look any, any better at all. Um, Although, but uh, OpenGL, but, OpenGL doesn't look bad in, in most cases, though. I mean, I used to. No, I really didn't notice a difference with this game, but that's that could be because of the way this game really it, it looks. You know, if it was a more detailed game, maybe I notice. There was a time period where I could only play games on OpenGL on Linux, and so I lived that life right. for a long time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even uh, even games are supposed to be DirectX, right? Or no? Oh yeah, no, like WoW and like basically everything used to only right. only go on open jail. Wow. That yeah. would be yeah, that's that's rough. It's back <laughs> in the old days, man. <laughs> you, you youngsters yeah, I avoided don't know that. how you got it, man. You don't know how good you got it nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> that's what people tell me. <laughs> uh so okay, so I tested let's see here. One, two, three, four four distros and one distro I did two different desktops. Um I tested. Uh, so first was Linux Mint, and that on the login screen of Valheim, you know, when you just start up the game and you're looking at your character and whatever, I left it there because that's fully rendered, so that's that's a good test, and it's something that can be reproduced. Yeah. So that's why I just let it sit there for maybe like five minutes, and I just watched the f- frames per second, and, you know, if it moved at all, I'd note it and average it out. It didn't really move much. It it pretty much stayed at whatever it was because I had I actually had a laptop cooler underneath my laptop as well to keep it as cool as possible so that I would have you know no throttling. Mm. Um, so in Linux Mint, it got 18 frames per second. With like I said, no settings were changed. I just put the resolution up to um, 1600 by 900. Now that sounds like crap, but you're talking about an old graphics card. Like this is this is old yeah, so yeah. just the fact that i could actually even play this game i was impressed <laughs> An old think, graphics uh, card on a laptop yeah 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 um so the next and the next one i i uh tested was solace i tried budgie and plasma desktop both of them got 18 frames per second um on the login screen that was that was steady like i think linux mint if i remember correctly did dropped down to 16, 17, but it wasn't long enough to really make the difference, the average different. So I think that could have been just a fluke, maybe, uh, kind of something running in the background that, that Solus didn't really have running. Um, you, you probably, so then I tried... You, what was that? You probably said it, and I just I just missed it, but um, what desktop version of Linux Mint were you using? Cinnamon? cinnamon yeah okay. yeah i should have noted that for i you know i use cinnamon so much yeah. that i forget the other ones exist <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> me too uh so okay and then then i used open tumbleweed that the plasma edition i i always use plasma on them because they they really have it down to a science they they love plasma over there <laughs> so that one was like 14 frames a second steady that was just that was it that's all it was getting i couldn't I, I just couldn't get any more. I, I tried messing around with some of the some of the power settings and whatnot. Um, I didn't install any other like applications to help or anything like that. I just wanted to get a raw like if you installed the distro and wanted to play a game, that's how it was. Mm-hmm. Like I could have probably installed game mode, which Solus and Mint have, mm-hmm. and it would have probably been 18 frames per second. Mm-hmm. But if you wouldn't know to do that, this is what you'd get. That's why I was kind of doing it this way. I think that's I fair. should have actually tested to see if that was the case, but I would be curious I only because I'm not 100% sold on the game mode thing. I I wasn't either until I tested it with um 
with uh, uh, ESO, ESO on my desktop. Now I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's an Nvidia thing. Maybe that's that's what it was. But with with that enabled versus disabled, it was it was stuttery without it mm. on. Mm, and then when I turned it on, it was smooth. Maybe that's something we should try with a little bit more of a control sometime. Yeah, well, it wasn't the frames per second that changed. It was just the smoothness of the game. So, yeah. in honesty, maybe yeah. that maybe that wouldn't change the frames per second on any of these results. Maybe it would just change the smoothness. Uh, well, but at that frame per second, how could you tell? <laughs> yeah. Um. So then the last one I tested was Fedora 34 Beta GNOME 40. I was testing that for Mintcast, so I figured, eh, I'll, I'll try it. That was actually the first one I tried because I was testing it. And that one was the worst, and it's a beta, so, I mean, I'll give it to them for that. But that was between 12 and 13 frames per second. I couldn't really average it because it literally would hover between those. Like, it would drop to 12, go to 13 first, 10 seconds, drop to 12, go to 13. You know, it was, it was like, just hovering there. Mm. Um... I, I don't know if that was just because it was the beta or if it was because it was known 40. And I did make sure that I was in X and not Wayland yeah. because Wayland, it wouldn't even load. I did try that. It would not mm-hmm. load in Wayland at all, OpenGL or um, uh, Vulkan. Hmm. So X, it did work and it was the lowest. But uh, and like I said, that is a little caveat there with the beta. <laughs> I didn't test it on 33. I should have, but... That's, didn't think about it. That's really interesting, though. I mean, I would have expected Fedora to do a little better um, than Solus, even. Um, but but I expected <coughs> Mint to be pretty high because Mint already has a lot of uh, all a lot of the extra packages and stuff that you would use for that yeah. rendering. Solus does too, actually. Solus is very good for gaming. Like it used to be like the king way back in the day because. Yeah. That's why. That's what um, Ike invented it or invented it, whatever. Came up with it for is to really be on the gaming side of things. Okay. And uh, it, it's kind I of just... fallen by the wayside for that, but it, it's still it's still pretty good. It, it, you don't have to do much to get things working. That's one of the ones that the Vulcan did work. They had it all set up and everything. And Mint was the same way. That was no problem. Maybe the elegance of it is that is that it's beautiful. And still lightweight, but like I think of Solus as being a heavier desktop because it looks so gorgeous. It's a very good looking desktop. You know what? The Plasma Edition is absolutely amazing. Uh, if if Linux Mint wasn't a thing, I'd use Solus Plasma or Budgie. No it's, problem. It's a great. I mean, it looks awesome. Like I've never actually had it installed, it, but it looks amazing. It is to me. It's the best looking distro out of all of them. I don't care what theme you put on a distro or whatever, Solus is the best. Yeah. Yeah, it looks <laughs> But nice. not to get into that, but <laughs> that was my results. That's really cool. We should do I love doing those kind of those kind of deep dives where we like get into the the number crunching. That's really good. Yeah, I love testing stuff. <laughs> that's that's like like I say, like I can I can get a game running with wine, with whatever, Lutris and once it's running, I don't want to play it. I just, I'm like, I'm satisfied. I've installed it. It runs. Well, you need to work on Magic <laughs> Legends for me then. Let's figure out how we get the yeah. best performance out of Magic Legends. <laughs> I want to. That, that, that's really intrigued me. I'm about to test. Uh, I'm going to look up Lutris right now and see if anyone has posted one yet. Uh, there, there's got to be eventually. Yeah, it'll get there eventually for sure. Um, and the game is technically still in beta, although... Uh, trust me, they're beta testing, taking your money. I'll tell you that. They, they, that that store is not beta. Um, yeah. But they're uh, eventually they'll get it. I typed in the wrong address, and now I can't even type the word Lutris without getting that incorrect address. So um, the last thing we were going to get into actually does involve uh, Lutris and the developer over there. Come on. I'm searching now to see if there's a new Magic Legends. <laughs> nope, still not one yet. If I had a really good working one, I'd find out how you post these here. I've never actually looked into making a uh, install script, but but mine's not working well enough that I <laughs> I don't think I should put it out there. Um, all right, so um, you were telling me that the developer of Lutris was recently on episode 399 of Links Unplugged. Yep. Um, 
and ex- express some desire for support, um, you know, for um, you know, his project and things yep. he's been working on. Um, unfortunately, I haven't listened to that episode. Um, could you give me the, the lowdown on it, the, the rundown a little bit? Well, um, basically, he he started this project and it was basically like, if you build it, they will come scenario. That's what he was thinking. Yeah. And when it came down to it, it really didn't happen like that. It was more users than it was people helping. Oh, yeah. And he, he, he made a point to say that there are people helping. It's not that there's no help, but he has to do all the work, the final work, the end result work. Like, if there is a pull request, he said that is the most work because he has to look through it and make sure everything is legit and, and merge it with his code. He said sometimes he just actually looks at their code and merges it with his um, without, like, like he'll actually write the code in his code instead of merging it. Yeah. Because it's easier. It's just faster that way. And, and he, he would, he wants to work on features, new features for Lutris. He doesn't want to work on all the bugs and stuff like that. It's not that he doesn't, he doesn't want to work on it. It's just, he said that it would take all his time just to work on the bugs and everything else that's wrong with it versus the new features. Like he couldn't, he could not do both. That's just the whole thing yeah i get that um i can i can somewhat relate to that that kind of has it's uh, oddly enough that kind of has some to do with my recent um role change at work where i'm kind of moving from where i felt like i was developing stuff to now where i'm kind of fixing things you know and originally i was fixing things and then i went to more development stuff and i decided the development stuff was really where my heart was (laughs) And then, and so now it feels weird going back to fixing bugs again. So I can kind of relate to that. And I, and I also can relate to the idea of like, he has a vision of what he wants Lutris to be and he can't get there if he's just fixing bugs and, and, right. you know, putting out fires. Um, so yeah, I really, I really relate to that. And, and I could see that being a problem with a project like Lutris only because, um, you need develop. So uh, Lutris has a huge community. There's a, a ton of people that make installers for games. Um, mm-hmm. there's a ton of people that, you know, use it. I myself use it and I've never contributed anything. Um, I don't feel like I have the right set of talents to contribute anything. Um, right. I feel the same way. Right. But I would love to, I would love to Me know. Too. I, if I, if I knew how to code, I would definitely help him. Yeah. And see, and see, that's the thing. I mean, they don't need a, they, he doesn't need an Ansible expert. You know, that's about the only thing I can help him with. <laughs> <laughs> like he, like I don't know what to do to to help a situation like this. And I feel like we're representative of a pretty large uh, percentage of the types of people that would use Lutris, because right. sure we're techie people. We we enjoy technology, or we wouldn't be using Linux. And right. um. And but we're also gamers. We're playing games. We're we're doing the fun stuff. It's recreational, yep. you know. And I just think that unfortunately, I mean, obviously, there's some percentage of those people that are developers, but I think it's probably lower than other communities in the Linux community. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And so I wish that um, I knew what to do to help. Like I think, and I haven't listened to this podcast yet. I'll go back and listen to it. Um, but. I I hope that in the podcast or maybe in the future, if there's some if there's some like way that he could you know post things that maybe you know non developers could do to try to to try to help or right you know I wonder if some things could just be tested um, like if we if there's a group of people that maybe test things um, and then right. and then we can say oh yeah it seems like this 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 branch seems to work i think it's worth i think it's worth the the merge um and then maybe there's another set of people that can do the merge or, or something i don't know i don't know what the answer is i know what you're saying i know what yeah. you're saying though i just know that i i just know that i would be willing to help if i felt like there was an avenue for me to do it and right now i just don't know i just don't feel like i am the right person to help him i don't know what to do right like the best way i can think of helping is to like write the scripts for for people to get the games going, but that doesn't help Lutris the program itself. Right, exactly, yeah, and and see that that's the thing that maybe 
maybe I could help with. Like we were talking earlier, like I'm trying to get Magic Legends to work if I knew how to write an install script. That, and I think that's something I could learn to do. I don't think that's that far out of my right. wheelhouse. Um, but that's I don't believe that's what he's looking for help with. No, that's <clears throat> not what he's talking about now. Yeah, so I don't know. I I I... I I think that because he expressed that on that particular podcast, I think he's gonna that's gonna bring attention to it, and maybe we'll yeah. see something oh, crop up. Whatever, I hope so. Yeah, and and whatever crops up in the future, you know, we'll talk about it on here. If there is some sort of open call for help of some kind, I'm gonna look into that after we're done recording this episode. We'll you know we'll talk about it here, and I, you know, if we're doing a Linux gaming podcast and there's some way for us to chip in and help you know, the Linux gaming community besides just doing this podcast, 100%. I want to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, so I agree. I believe that there, I have faith in knowing that there is, and that we're going to find out and, uh, and, and hopefully we'll be able to be involved in the future. So, right. Um, yeah, well he actually, he actually cut his job in half. He actually started working part time just to work on Lutris more. Man. Like that's how passionate he is about this. I mean, he did express that he, he did want more time to himself as well, but he said the main reason he did it is for Lutris. He really wanted to spend more time. And, uh, also he said, um, Lutris is written in Python and GT and using GTK. And he said that he doesn't even know anybody who uses it anymore. It used to be a huge thing, and now just nobody uses it. So he doesn't even know who can help him, even if he wanted to hire somebody. Lutris is written in Python and GTK. Yeah, that's that's what that's what it's. He didn't explicitly say that, but that's what he made it sound like because he was he was talking about how all this development around Python and GTK was coming out, and then all of a sudden everything went away from that and they went to QT and GTK or QT in Python. Yeah. And it's just gone for for the GTK. He said um Lollipop I think was the only program he knew that was Python and GTK now hmm. and that's its own thing so it's not like he could help him, you know. Man. Um I just went to uh their support page. So they have on their support page basically just, you know, financially support which um which that's something definitely you could do. If uh, you don't feel like you can help in developing, you can't always contribute money if you if you have it. Obviously, I'm not saying I'm not saying anybody should go out of their way to do it if they don't feel comfortable doing it. Um, but I, I may actually I may actually try to do something here because you know Linux gaming has changed. I've been a Linux gaming fanboy for so long. I I've never developed anything in my life um, related to this. But the uh, the the community itself, just the people involved. And the availability of of being able to play games on Linux has dramatically improved. I mean, in the last couple of years, we've improved more than the previous 10 years. I mean, it's been a dramatic improvement, and I only want to see it grow. So um, if I can't contribute in any other way, um, I'll at least sign up for this Patreon. So, um yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll This is something I'll keep my finger on the pulse of, and we'll see what we can do to help. Anyway, I hate to li- yeah definitely a worthy cause. <laughs> I hate to end on like more, more of a, uh, a a a down note, but um, well, I I would I would say I I want to actually thank him for even developing Lutris. You know that I would I would you know <laughs> shake his yeah. hand for doing it because you know it's it's such a good program and it's such a good idea. And when it first came out, it was like holy crap, we have this thing now that we just press a button and it installs a game. Like, mm-hmm. I think I think he released this before uh, Steam was... A, I mean, not Steam, but... Um, uh, the Proton. Uh, Proton. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he released it before that, and I mean, like, it was just revolutionary when it came out, you know, to, to hit a button and everything's working, you know? Yeah, you know, this is similar to... This is a different thing, but it's a similar kind of appreciation. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and they were complaining about OBS, and... <laughs> I was just thinking about trying to podcast on Linux with video years before OBS was released. Yeah. And yeah. all you had was this one software. I can't think of the name of it, and I don't want to shame the guy anyway. It was great software for that time. But it was like when OBS came out, it was like, oh, no, this is the future. Like, this is it now. You know what I mean? Right. And there was so many yep. other, like, wine bottlers out there um, and, you know, things that did similar things to what Lutris does. 
and and they were all great and and God bless those people. But it was like whenever Lutris came out, and it was just like, oh, this this well, this is the future now. This is it, you know. <laughs> and we have arrived. <laughs> so much of the Linux community, so much of what I love about it is that it it relies on real people. Like it, there's no Elon Musk, there's no Jeff nope. Bezos. Like it relies on real people. Yep. That's the upside of Linux, but the downside of that is that real people got to eat. <laughs> real yeah, real people the they got to do jobs that they're passionate about that they love doing. And, you know, we need to make sure that we try our best to support that, you know. Yep. Uh, anyway, speaking of supporting uh, people doing what they love, Subscribe to us on YouTube. Subscribe to us. On, yeah. <laughs> subscribe to us on iTunes <laughs> and wherever podcasts are found. What? What are we? LTT? Freaking getting in those, getting in those uh, store uh, store perks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and uh, I guess we'll see you next week.